Hey guys, welcome back. So, Kalia, anybody vote for you online yet? Yeah, heaps. There's been my mum, she gave me five dollars, but she wants it back. And our neighbour. <sighs> well, at least you're living life to the full. Right now, we're off to Wellington to meet an extraordinary young man who's dealing with life's biggest challenge. Let's go. Oh, don't leave me with the neighbour. If you've ever wondered what real courage is about, or what it's like to face your biggest fear every day, then my man Kurt Filinga is about to school you. He's 20 years old, was diagnosed with leukemia last year. Let's meet him. No, Silla, meet my man Kurt. What's up, brother? Hey. How are you? I'm good. What was life like before you were diagnosed with leukemia? Uh, just university. Just, you know, being a normal teen after finishing college. I, I kind of felt like I had my whole life planned out. Mm. Uh, I was doing film and media. Which is, that's um, something I'm really passionate about. And then this just happened and my whole life changed. And... Well, leukaemia is a cancer of the blood cells. So all of the cells in your blood are produced in your bone marrow. In leukaemia, there's a problem with those cells. While the bone marrow is producing all of these cells, which are the baddies, essentially, the rest of the bone marrow isn't able to do the job it's supposed to do. I know that it's probably been like a really hard journey so far. What have been like some of like the hardest points? Try not to think about all the negative things, because mm. uh, all I wanted to do was just uh, get better and go back to uni and just continue from where I left off. You get to see other people walk past every day and you kind of wish that was you. How would he have gotten leukemia? It's not something you can catch and it's not something you can do anything to prevent. And once you've got it, unfortunately, other than treatment, there's nothing you can do to get rid of it either. How important has your family been for this whole process? Oh man, they've been real, really important, uh, especially my mom. She's always been there for me. Like, there's days where she hasn't slept, she'll just sit in a chair and just stare at me the whole night. You know, not knowing whether or not I'll wake up and stuff. It's just one of those uh, overprotective Polynesian moms. <laughs> so, yeah. It's it's just, it's um, to be Kurt's mother and I see the pain that my mother, my, my son, my son's going through, it's very difficult. My brother, he's just uh, so awesome how he was able to just come over here and uh, put his career on hold just for me. And, uh, without my family, I don't think I would have made it through this. Yeah. yeah. That's all it matters to us, is to put his story there and encourage our people, our Pacific Island people, to, to be bone marrow donors, because it's so important to save somebody's life. That is so huge. It can be very difficult for us to find donors for Pacific Island uh, people at the moment, because there aren't that very many uh, Pacific Islanders on the registry that we use. Can you tell me what um, Kurt's journey's been like since he's been diagnosed? So Kurt's had a long journey and a hard journey. Unfortunately, in Kurt's case, the first lot of chemotherapy we gave didn't, didn't manage that. He wasn't in remission. So we gave him another lot of even stronger chemotherapy, which did get him into remission. Yep. We then gave him a third cycle of the same chemotherapy. Wow. And then he had another cycle of chemotherapy which we were using to maintain remission with the hope of giving him a, a bone marrow transplant to hopefully cure his disease. And he relapsed during that treatment. And despite another cycle of chemotherapy, uh, which we had to get from overseas, we haven't been able to get Kurt into remission again. So his disease is active and it's very likely that he'll die of his disease in the not too distant future. Do you ever worry about how your mum's gonna cope once this is all over? My mom told me she doesn't know what she's, she's going to do if I go, if I pass away. She said that uh, it's like losing a part of her. It's hard for me because uh, as much as I don't have control over this disease, I want to I wanna live for her too. Yeah. Uh, so I keep, I, I keep my best to just fight on and yeah. I got to ask, bro, are you scared? Yeah, oh, you're yeah, sitting here yeah. talking to me, smiling I and everything. Don't, yeah, I'm just real scared. Yeah, I I do worry a lot just to, to myself though. You don't know if you're gonna wake up the next morning. Or, like I kind of feel like it's not my time. Right. So, and I I'm so passionate about getting out there and helping others and doing my film and stuff. 
Yeah. Tell me, brother, what's that about? Uh, it was meant to be really about uh, having my transplant. Yeah. And then um, it kind of twisted when um, I got, when my leukemia relapsed and uh, we kind of made it more about my uh, struggle to, to live. So, cause I thought even though this is happening, I'm not gonna give up. For me, that's something that I'm passionate about, sir. So. You look spunky. <laughs> This is your moment of truth, my son. Getting ready to go for Kurt's party today. If you could make any film at all, what would you make? I love The Dark Knight. When I went to see that, I was oh, yeah, yeah. thinking maybe I should do something like that, but maybe make a Polynesian superheroes or something. Yeah. That would be awesome. So. With a tongue and joker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've had like a massive response from our Facebook and a lot of our fans wanted to ask some questions. I haven't got time for all the questions, but I will okay. ask you some of them, OK? Cool. Yeah. If you could have a room full of any one thing, what would it be? KFC, probably. Ooh. Yeah, I love KFC. It's what I've been eating quite a lot, even though I shouldn't be, but... <laughs> <laughs> Blonde or brunette? Uh, brunette. Light skin or dark skin? Uh, dark skin. <laughs> now, Penelope Cruz, J-Lo, Halle Berry, Beyonce, Jessica Alba or Selma Hayek? Oh, man. Making you think. Just yeah. Alba. <laughs> <laughs> as a young Samoan man, how do you accept your journey? As a Samoan, as a young Samoan man, I kind of feel like um, I'm very blessed and, and, and honoured to have all these things, you know? Especially God, like, um, just having so much faith in Him and leaving everything in His hands kind of puts me on the right track. And, you know, when I'm feeling down, I talk to Him, so... Yeah. yeah, I think that's what helps me get through this journey. I want to say Maro Abito for having us and just for seeing us. And we're not rich or anything, but from our Pacific Beach Street family to your little Ainga, this is our little gift. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you. Awesome. All the best, also. Mm. Keep the strength, bro. Keep the faith. Thank you. Sweet. People said amazing things about Kurt. Here are some of them. Naif says, cancer has consumed too many of our people. This is one story I'll definitely be keen to watch. Bless your cotton softs. Evelyn said, you're such an amazing person, said to teach us how precious each life and each day is. Lucy Silulu says, no, I know no one can ever be fully prepared, but with trust in the Lord, he shouldn't have to be worried or scared. Famalosi. Oh, shock sure, guys. Thank you so much for your words of encouragement and support. Now, coming up after the break, I meet a brother from Christchurch who can actually rap, Mr. Maitreya. Pacific Beach Street. 